This video will guide you through a detailed demonstration of Celex's Venaflux starter and Pro products for the application of thrombosis. The video is divided into four main chapters. 1. Initialize Venaflux assay software and set up your biochip geometry. 2. My Recibo pump setup. 3. Biochip washout. 4. Running a whole blood thrombosis assay. Initializing Venaflux assay software enables control of the MyRecevo pump and in the case of the Venaflux Pro platform, it also enables control of the digital camera connected to the microscope. Open the Venaflux assay software program and open the default protocol. This loads a default program which may be edited according to the user's needs. Click Venaflux setup. Right click to select run assay step or Click Run Assay Step with the green arrow from the menu. The geometry setup is important as the internal dimensions of the channels of your biochip affect the shear stress or shear rate of the experiment. Click Geometry Setup. This reveals the step properties which default to those for the Vena 8 Fluoro Plus chip, which is the most popular biochip for thrombosis assays. The channel width is 400 micrometers and the channel height or depth is 100 micrometers. The liquid viscosity is automatically set for whole blood, which is 4.5 centipoise. For any other liquid, such as buffer or culture media, this would be 1 centipoise. And the syringe volume is 500 microliters, as this is usually the size of the syringe used for thrombosis experiments. Right click on geometry setup and click run assay step or click Run Assay Step with the green arrow from the menu. The geometry of the biochip has now been set. This chapter is divided into four sections. 1. Wash out my receivo pump. 2. Wash out Multiflow 8 and remove any bubbles. 3. Connect my receivo pump to Multiflow 8. 4. Wash out 8-weight cable from Multiflow 8. First, let's wash out the MyRecevo pump. The orange connection is the input to the pump and the green connection is the output from the pump. The pump is washed out twice, first with ethanol and secondly with PBS. Place the orange connection in the ethanol solution and place the green connection into an empty tube for waste collection. Click Wash Out Pump and click Pump Wash Out Action Step. This reveals the step properties with the following default settings. Wash volume is 2000 microliters. As the syringe volume is 500 microliters, this means that the syringe will refill four times to complete this wash step. Right click on pump washout action step and click run assay step. The pump will pull or aspirate ethanol into the syringe and dispense it into the waste tube. The status of the Myris pump can be viewed and shows the volume dispensed from 500 microliters to 1,000 microliters to 1,500 microliters until it finally completes the washout of 2,000 microliters. This washout step is repeated with PBS. Next, we wash out the Multiflow 8 separately before connecting it to the MyRecevo pump. This is done by using a 50 ml syringe filled with distilled water. Create washout step for Multiflow 8. As the MyRecevo pump can also operate without the Multiflow 8, the default protocol does not include this and must be created. To do this, go to the main menu and click on the tab Create Protocol Control. Click the folder icon Insert Washout Control. Go to the main menu again and click on the tab Create Protocol Actions. Click the action Insert Set Manifold Channel Step. Repeat this step twice. This allows you to set each of the Multiflow 8 channels in the on or off position. By default, the channels are always in the off position. Click on the first action, Set Current Channel, to reveal the step properties below. For each channel, change the position to On. Go to the main menu and click on the tab Set Up Venaflux and click Run Assay Step with the green arrow. You can rename this washout step as Multiflow 8 Wash. Connect the 50 ml syringe to the input of the Multiflow 8. Push the syringe plunger and the water will flow through the Multiflow 8 and the 8-way cable into a waste container as shown. 
Ensure bubbles are removed from Multiflow 8 by immersing the outlet of the 8-way cable in distilled water and pushing the plunger until no bubbles are visible in the container. Gently push and then pull the plunger to aspirate water. This will remove bubbles from Multiflow 8. Repeat this two times. Now the Multiflow 8 has been washed and all bubbles removed. The next step is to close all the channels. The next step is to connect the My Receiver pump to the Multiflow 8. To do this, we must prime or wash out the connector. Turn the valve 90 degrees anti-clockwise or downwards towards the Multiflow 8. Gently tap the top of the plunger. This releases a small amount of liquid which you will see coming out of the connector. Take the outlet of the Myris pump and connect it to the inlet of the Multiflow 8. Now turn the valve 180 degrees so that the off position is facing upwards towards the syringe. The 50ml syringe may now be removed. The next step is to wash out or prime the 8-way cable from the Multiflow 8. Click Wash Out Cable. This folder has an on-off command to open or close each channel and a command to dispense reagents through each channel. Wash out each channel individually or select Run Assay Step on the entire folder to wash out all channels sequentially. This washes out each channel of the 8-way cable with 100 microliters of PBS which can be seen jetting out of the output as shown. The next chapter is preparation of the biochip for the assay. First, place the biochip in the microenvironmental chamber as shown. This heats the chip to 37 degrees Celsius, suitable for cell-based assays. To prime the channels of the biochip, First, pre-wet the input and output ports of the biochip to prevent evaporation. This is achieved by pipetting 40 microliters of PBS into the input and output ports of the chip as shown. Ensure the liquid is pipetted into the microwells, not into the channels of the chip. Next, open all 8 channels of the Multiflow 8. To do this, click the washout step as shown. This folder has an on-off command to open or close each channel of the Multiflow 8. Run the command as shown to open all 8 channels. Next, place the output of the 8-way cable from the Multiflow 8 at the input ports of the chip. Don't plug it in yet. Hold it in place while giving the next command to dispense 40 microliters of PBS through each of the 8 channels. This washes out or primes the 8-way cable from the Multiflow 8 with liquid before plugging it into the input port of the chip. This step prevents bubbles getting into the chip. The 8-way cable can now be plugged into the input port. Once this is done, close all the channels of the Multiflow 8 as shown. Next, we wash out the channels of the chip. This ensures the removal of any unbound protein in the channel. For thrombosis experiments using whole blood, we recommend that you wash each channel of the biochip as you intend to use it. This prevents evaporation issues. Place a waste Eppendorf tube in the holder as shown and a tube connecting the output of the chip to the Eppendorf. Click Wash Out Chip Wash Out. This folder has an on off command to open or close each individual channel and a command to dispense 40 microliters of reagent through each channel. Run these commands for the first channel as shown. As this channel of the chip is washed, you will see the liquid coming through the output tubing and into the Eppendorf as shown. You are now ready to start the thrombosis assay. This chapter demonstrates how to run a whole blood thrombosis assay. To input the settings for the assay, first set the syringe volume. We are using a 500 microliter syringe in aspirate mode. This means that we are pulling the sample through the chip. Therefore, to ensure we have a reasonably good volume which we can pull without having to refill the syringe, we set the syringe to 480 microliters. In other words, the syringe is almost empty and can pull 480 microliters before having to refill. Second, select the channel that you will use to run the assay, closing all other channels. Finally, set the shear rate. In this example, we are running a shear stress of 67.5 dynes per square centimetre, or a shear rate of 1500 per second. 
Once the settings for the assay have been input, the blood sample in the Eppendorf tube is placed in the holder as shown. The output tube from the chip is placed in the blood sample and the command is given to run the assay. Thrombi formation can be seen in the channel of the biochip as shown. Parameters of the assay can be viewed in the pump status view pane or as a graph in the assay status view pane. Here you will see the volume of blood dispensed, the assay time elapsed and assay time remaining. One advantage of the Venaflux Pro platform is the integration of the digital camera with the Venaflux assay software. This means you can control the camera's exposure settings directly from the Venaflux assay software as shown. And that's it. You just completed your first thrombosis assay with Salix's Venaflux Starter or Pro platforms. If you'd like to learn more about Venaflux solutions, then check out the other videos on our channel or get in contact with us now.